we got down here to the practicum, uh, we were instructed to build a solar voltaic trainer system that could be used uh, virtually with anybody, whether it be the youth or adults. So um, what we did, we uh, was given instructions to construct a solar voltaic trainer. Um, we started out uh, with uh, with initial plan, we had to draw our schematics to get it down on paper so we could start building. Uh, we started with our frame first. Uh, most of the frame was made out of wood. Uh, we had to start with the bottom and come up to the top. Uh, we left our panel off here to uh, install all our components before uh, we mounted it. It's a little easier to work with. Um, what we found out when we started, the struggles that we went through uh, were overcame when we started having our team meetings, uh, which really worked very well. Uh, every morning and every evening, we would sit down as a group and decide what we were going to do for the next day or the previous day and recap. Uh, we also worked in our journals as well. Uh, so we'll, I'll run through the system here for you a little bit. 12 volt DC panel, which we run uh, alongside nice. of here. We'll go through our power check. Uh, the power check is designed to monitor the system of the input and outputs of amps, watts. Um, it also continues on into our solar charge controller. Uh, this controller is designed to uh, shorten the charge to the battery when the, when the battery is full. Uh, it prevents uh, overcharging. Uh, after that, um, we started wiring in our panel here. We run it through our breaker box, which comes right through here and it ends up into our inverter. This is our dump load uh, right here. What we found out was is when we turned this on and we kept it out in the sun, in a certain position, a lot of these components are not made for sunlight, uh, so therefore they, they kind of got a little warm. So we installed a little uh, dump load fan in here to keep our uh, inverter uh, coop from overheating. Uh, as we continue down here with our car uh, charge controller, which runs into our battery. Uh, our battery is a um, 12 volt battery. Uh, it keeps uh, the inverter charged up. Um, this battery is a low maintenance battery and it's, uh, you can't spill it as well. Uh, this is our breaker box though. Uh, everything has to run through the breaker box where we can disconnect it, uh, turn it off and turn it on. There's several, uh, buttons on here that you can shut the system down and isolate it from one side to the other. Uh, we also ended up, uh, to prove our point was, was uh, that we wanted to build a solar power trainer, uh, as I mentioned before, for the youth and adults. So what we really wanted to do was put a visual on it. So we installed some uh, phone chargers on it to uh, charge your phone. Uh, what we have realized uh, as working as a team, it, it took team effort um, to get anything done when you're working with a group. Uh, of course, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. yeah. When you're working with a group, uh, of course, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. <laughs> one, thing we also, one thing we also noticed um, when we were researching uh, manufactured system trainers, we did realize that the cost of them was, you know, plus or minus 14 grand, which I don't know how many people can just walk that out. Um, so the cost of ours was roughly around $630 for down to the hardware, to the components, wires, everything. So we learned that building our own was actually a better way instead of buying one and having to learn how the system works already made. It was easier to learn how it would functions by putting the pieces together. So that was one thing that we learned was interesting. Um, we also learned, like he said, when we took this system outside, we had to keep the control panel shaded um, from the sun because not only did the inverter get too hot, but so did you know our other components. They're not designed to be in the sun and under extreme heat. Our wires that we used also are not. Um, they are acceptable to code to the NEC codes for use, um, but they are not up to code to be outside for long term. So if it was to be outside, you would have to have different wires. The wire sizing, we could have went smaller um, for better um, efficiency. It actually, we should have used an 18 gauge through here 
if this 8 gauge is right, um, we can use the 10 gauge instead. It is still, again, up to code with the NEC rules, um, but according to their equations, they should have been smaller. Um, I think I think one of the things that I failed to mention uh, about running through this system here was some of the safety features that we have, and the one thing that uh, we definitely uh, really kind of concentrated on was protecting the battery. Um, the <coughs> battery is designed to be ventilated, so we couldn't put it in a closed box because the battery does get off certain gases, which is probably be harmful if it's enclosed. Um, so we kind of made it open where it get plenty of air, where it can breathe a little bit. Uh, we put the uh, Pexi glass on the top where it can be visible for anybody to see how this was wired in. And it's also a protective mechanism if you drop wrenches or something else on the post. This will be able to protect it. It actually worked really well. I was very impressed with how it worked. Um, again, the panel absorbs the solar photovoltaic comes down through here. We got it wired in through the maker box and then to the power check so we can see how much power we are consuming. It comes down, as he says, controls the charge. We don't want the battery to explode. Um, without the dump load, the inverter cannot run for very long. It runs 450 watts. Pretty interesting because if your device you're plugging into it takes more than 450 watts to start running, the inverter will not run it. Okay, we have to give our special thanks to our practicum teachers or advisors. We have Thais, Russell, Tim Chester, Dr. Layton, Wally Higgins, Jonathan Bow, and other fellow students who actually